Okay, we're continuing with chapter three, which is on the histogram. In this video, we're going to go through section two, drawing a histogram. Okay, this section explains how to draw a histogram. The method is not difficult, but there are a couple of wrong turns to avoid. The starting point in drawing a histogram is a distribution table, which shows the percentage of families with incomes in each class interval. So this is the problem we started with in section one, the income distribution in the United States in like, it was like in 1973. And so what they're saying is to make a histogram, you start with, if we come here, a distribution table like this. And so you decide what your class intervals are going to be. So here it's zero to a thousand, one thousand to two thousand, two thousand to three thousand. Those have a width of one thousand dollars, but even but here they've got ten thousand to fifteen thousand. And each of these intervals or each of these bins has a count of families that have that income level. The distribution table just has each interval and the percent of the total of the count, the per, like the count of families in this income level divided by the total families as a percent. And you, so you get the percent for each class interval. These percentages are found by going back to the original data, which was on the 50,000 families and counting. Nowadays, this sort of work is done by computer. Yeah, so you could automate this task like in Excel, right? Just make a formula here and then, and then drag the formula and you get all of the percentages. Okay, the computer has to be told what to do with families that fall right on the boundary between two class intervals, right? What if, what if a family has an income level of exactly a thousand dollars? Do they go into to, into this class interval or this class interval? So this is called an endpoint convention. The convention followed in Table One is indicated by the caption. So it says here the class intervals include the left endpoint but not the right endpoint. So if a family has a thousand dollar per year income, it goes into this interval. So each interval includes the left endpoint, but not the right endpoint. So you choose the in, you choose the endpoint convention for your histogram. The first step in drawing a histogram is to put down a horizontal axis. For the income histogram, some people get, and so this is the wrong way to do it, because okay, zero, one, two, three, that's fine. But then 7, 10, the 7 to 10, that's three, that, that, that's three units wide, but that has the same width as 6 to 7 and 5 to 6. It needs to be evenly spaced. For a histogram, your horizontal axis needs to be evenly spaced. And the reason is because, like we talked about in Section 1, the areas represent percentages. You know, there might be an application for a graph where it's not that big of a deal to have unequally spaced intervals like this for uh, for some kind of graph, but not for histograms. Okay, so you need to have, in, they need to be evenly spaced like this. The next step is to draw the blocks. It's tempting to make their heights equal to the percents in the table. Figure three shows what happens if you make that mistake. So here, what they did was for each interval, like 10 to 15, if we come here, 10 to 15, 26. They made the height 26. But when you do it this way, the graph, it says the graph gives much too rosy a picture of the income distribution. For example, figure three says that there were more families with incomes over 25,000 than under 7,000. The U.S. was a rich country in 1973, but not that rich. So this is not accurate. And what, so what it goes on to say here is that the area of each block needs to be equal to the percent of that block. So for this 10 to 15, we need to say, okay, five times the height, and that gives us 26. Now, this is a little confusing to me because if you remember when we went through section one, if we come here, we worked this example problem, and it says... Okay, the histogram below shows the distribution of final scores in a certain class. Which block represents the people who scored between 60 and 80? Okay, that was this. 10% scored between 20 and 40. What about the percentage between 40 and 60? So it's saying 10% scored between 20 and 40. But the width of this block is 20 and the height is 1. So 20 times 1 is 20%. 
So uh, to, I, I guess according to what they're saying in, in, the, in this sec- in section two, drawing a histogram, this is not correct. So I've read through all this really carefully, and, th- and that's what they're saying, that if you have a correctly created histogram, then the areas of the blocks represent the, the percent of the total data within that interval. And even in section one, it has a, you know, a highlighted point that says in histograms, the areas of the blocks represent percentages. So going forward, when you see a histogram, you know, assuming it's like a a histogram that's drawn correctly, made correctly, the area of each block is the percentage of data points within that block. So the area you get the the class interval width times the height of the block, assuming there is a vertical scale. Remember, histograms aren't required to have vertical scales. But even if they don't have a vertical scale, they they, they still should be drawn to scale. The blocks should be drawn to scale so that, at the very least, the relative sizes of the blocks are, are correct as far as the differences in percentages within that block. Okay, so then how do you draw the histogram, though? Well... You draw a vertical scale, and then you can, I guess you can remove that vertical scale after if you want, but you just make sure that the area of the block represents the correct percent of data points within that block. So the width of this block is 5, is, is five 5,000. So if we come here, 10 to 15, we just take 26 divided by 5, and they show that here. 26 divided by 5 is 5.2. And that's the height of the block. And that's going, and, and when you make all of your blocks this way, that's going to produce a histogram that, that has the, the, the correct visual interpretation of the, di- of the true distribution. Okay, so they do this for 7 to 10, from 10 to 15. They just take the amount, the percent in the, you look at your distribution table, the percent in the interval from 7 to 10, divide that by 3, and that's the height. And, and this, this works if you make sure that your, your horizontal axis is equally spaced. That, you know, that you want to see that, that that's, that's how you make sure that the areas are all proportional to one another. They're correctly proportional to one another. That's the whole point of the histogram. It's all about getting those areas correctly proportional in terms of the percent of data points within that, that interval. All right, so it, it says here to figure out the height of a block over a class interval, divide the percentage in your distribution table within that interval by the length of the interval. Okay, so let's come back. So remember, you have your distribution table. The class intervals do not have to be the same width, okay? You can make the class intervals whatever you want. And you can make your your endpoint convention whatever you want. The class intervals don't have to be the same width, but the horizontal axis has to be evenly spaced, okay? And then, so here's the correctly drawn histogram. You draw the histogram to where each block is the width of each block is is a class interval, right? You have the, the, the number of blocks you have is the same as the number of class intervals you have in your distribution table. You set that up. It's whatever you, however you want to set it up. So the number of blocks you have is, is the same as the number of class intervals you have in your distribution table. And then the width of each block corresponds to the width of the class interval. So, but the blocks don't have to have the same width. It's, it, we, we talked about this, it, you know, it's you know, a lot of a lot of histograms you see that the blocks will have equal widths, but in general for histograms they don't have to have equal widths. But since the the, the horizontal axis is evenly spaced, that's why you're going to have blocks. You could have blocks of different widths, and you set up your the the heights of the blocks so that if you take the the class interval width times the height of the, of the block of the class interval, that equals the percent in the distribution table. Okay, so now what does that mean or is the units of the of the vertical axis whenever you do it that way? Because if we come back here, this was done incorrectly. They, they, this is where they made the heights of the blocks equal to the percents in the table. Well, the units are percent here, but, but that, that's not going to be the case for a correctly drawn histogram. The units of the vertical axis are going to be percent per whatever the unit of the horizontal axis is. Because if you think about it, so we took, like here, we took the the length, the width is 5 here, right? And the the percent, the total percent here was 26. We divided 26% by 5. So that's percent per 
well, what it five? What is this five? What? This is income thousands of dollars. So like, it's it's not it's this is five thousand dollars. So it, that, that's you you get percent per thousand dollars. So in a histogram, the the vertical axis is going to be percent per whatever the horizontal axis unit is. And all that's saying is, so let's read this paragraph just to make sure you understand this. The procedure is straightforward, but the units on the vertical scale are a little complicated. For instance, to get the height of the block over the interval 7,000 to 10,000, you divide 15% by $3,000. So the units for the answer are percent per thousand dollars. Think about per just as you would when reading that there are 50,000 people per square mile in Tokyo. In each square mile of the city, there are about 50,000 people per square mile. How many people per square mile, right? And how, how do they figure that out? Well, they know, the, they know the, the total area of Tokyo is, you know, I don't know, 10,000 square miles. I don't know. And you divide the total population of Tokyo by 10,000 square miles. And what you, what you end up with is a number and the units are people per square mile. That tells you how many people are, are on average or in each square mile in Tokyo. It's the same with histograms. The height of the block over the interval 7,000 to 10,000 is 5% per thousand dollars. In each thousand dollar interval between 7,000 and 10,000, there are about 5% of the families. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to work some problems where we practice drawing a histogram.